Hey team, Jesse Reynolds here getting the wad video out real quick for you on uh, Monday morning. This is uh, December the 8th now. We've got two completely unrelated separate topics, but they're both very short, simple training points. And just uh, I, I observed them a couple of times through some different conversations today. And so they're, they're fresh in my mind. It's kind of how I get my wad video ideas. So the first one, be enthusiastic. That sounds so simple, so obvious, but I really... Uh, I really question how often each of our team members are enthusiastic when we are sharing AdvoCare with people. See, we can help you package your story and we can give you all the words to say. And if you are not bringing enthusiasm, you know, I had a, a new team member on a three-way call with CJ Stockel uh, earlier today. And the, the team member was saying he had shot a, a Facebook message to somebody and they didn't respond the right way. And CJ, you know, there's a reason why he and Melissa are the top leaders on the team. And he said, Stop doing that. He said, you can't communicate uh, excitement. You can't communicate emotion through a written typed communication. You have to get on the phone with people. You have to be in front of people. You have to be looking them in the eyeball. You got to get that big goofy smile going, being excited about what you have your hands on. And that's what I want to share with you. Listen, Bob, man, I am so excited that I got you on the phone because you are not going to believe what it is that me and Sally got our hands on here. How soon can you and I talk? Bob, I'm going to be... Uh, Man, I found a way to make $1,000 a month, pay off my credit card bills. You and me need, need to sit down and get together. What are you doing for lunch tomorrow? See, that, that excitement, that sense of urgency, that can't come across in text, that can't come across in email, that can't come across in Facebook messages or posts or anything else. Excitement and enthusiasm every single time. And I want to challenge you with this too, especially if you're a veteran and or especially if your business is not where you thought or hoped it would be. You have The thing about being enthusiastic that is a decision. That's not an emotion. Being, uh, being enthusiastic, that is simply being disciplined enough to share with excitement every single time. Being able to say, you know what? I understand those past five people told me no, but it's not about those past five people because what if this next person could be my first rock star? And the only way this next person is going to be my next rock star is if I am enthusiastic. So that's the first part of the WOD video today. Be enthusiastic. If you get nothing else out of this, you can say the wrong things about AdvoCare, but just be enthusiastic and other people are going to want to be a part of it just because you're enthusiastic. You know, that is one of the top, top tips in, uh, how I raise myself from failure to success in selling is be enthusiastic. So we have got that covered. We're moving on to the other topic. I want to, I want to help you develop a mindset when talking to people about finances. I hope everyone has read Matt Warren's core beliefs. That post that I shared, uh, I think it was two, three days ago now. If you want your business and your life to move forward, read Matt Warren's post. If you don't know what it is, comment in the thread and we'll, we'll repost a link, but you've got to read that, okay? And so one of the whole things is, and when we talk to people about finances, people like to put walls up all the time. Oh yeah, things are great, I love my job. Oh yeah, things are great. Yeah, man, we're doing so good and everything. See, good is relative. You know, what, what most everyone else out there considers good and what we in the world of AdvoCare consider good are two very different things. Most people, uh, you say, hey, do you have any debt? And they're like, oh, I don't have any debt except for my house, my couple car payments and a couple credit cards. That's debt, okay? So the the whole thing we want to be, be going towards here is when we're talking to people about whatever their hopes and dreams are. And and that, that takes, that uh, I think John Butler did an incredible wad a little while ago about helping unpack the dream box of people, right? Helping, helping them dream more again. But when we start doing that, you know, I, I was on a great phone call earlier tonight with a, with a new pro prospective team member. And, uh, you know, he's talking about four kids and, and putting his, his kids through college and three daughters and weddings and all these things. So he's got the wheels turning and the vision. And here's, here's the thought. Here's the question. I want to simply encourage you slash challenge you to start incorporating this in your conversations with anyone out there. This is going to help you find more prospects, but then especially if you're on the leadership side of this and you're doing a three-way phone call or a two-on-one or talking to somebody in a mixer, you owe it to them to bring strength. Here's the question. Do you have a plan? That's awesome. You really want Sally to come home. So I understand you're not too sure about this AdvoCare thing. Do you have another plan? Do you, uh, with, with your current education, professional training, background, whatever, do you have another option to make what you just told me you said you want to do? Do you have another option to make that possible? 
Because for almost everyone out there, the answer is no. And here's some truth for you. You can have the greatest intentions in the world, but unless you got a plan and a vehicle to make that happen, you're just wishing and hoping, and nothing will change. Intentions by themselves are powerless. They need to be backed by action, and those actions need to be taken in a certain specific manner, following the right plan, utilizing the right vehicle. Guys, we have the right plan. We have the right vehicle. Don't settle. If someone uh, don't settle for their their bogus answers, challenge people's thinking. Challenge their thinking. This is all of us. Our thinking is what gets us in the situations we're in. We as leaders are called to challenge people's thinking. Oh yeah, things are great. Do you have credit cards? Yeah, everybody's got credit cards. Well, I don't have credit card debt. My buddy, or maybe you do. You know what, my buddy Jesse, he doesn't have credit card debt. Do you love your job? Yeah, you know, it pays the bills. That's not what I asked you. I said, do you love your job? You know, if you weren't working your job every day, would you still be doing it? What would you be doing with your time? You know, are you able to go to every single one of your kids' games all the time? Are you able to pay for your kids to go on those trips? Are you able to pay for them to, you know, to go go do those things and play those sports and have those clothes and get those basketball shoes? You know, you have to ask people questions like that. And the and the answer is no. Well, then what's your plan to do something about it? Because we have the answer and we can tell people, go do AdvoCare. So we go around and we tell people, go do AdvoCare all the time. But the problem is they're not doing it because the, in their mind, they still think they don't need AdvoCare. We need to help people realize that they are not going to get where they want to be from a, a physical or financial standpoint without AdvoCare. Once they see that and get that, a rational, logical person is going to be able to make the decision to say, you know what, you're right. I need to take a look at this. You know what, you're right. My family deserves more. I'm going to give this a shot. You, you know what? You're right. I can come out to that Thursday night meeting. So the two, the two training points, be enthusiastic. And the second training point, ask people, do you have a plan? You guys are champions. Let's go out there and get to work.